March is Women's History Month, and according to the latest UN report, listen to this. I, folks, I was fascinated by this. 130 years, that's how long it'll take for us to reach gender parity at the highest levels of government worldwide. 130 years. Yeah, and that's unacceptable to a lot of people, <laughs> especially the woman behind that report, <laughs> Pumzile Lombo Nuka, United Nations Undersecretary General and Executive Director of UN Women. She is also the former Deputy President of South Africa. Welcome, and we certainly appreciate you being with us. I love your quote. You say, the world cannot afford to play out this timeline, unquote. So how do we change that? How do we speed up the timeline? Well, certainly uh, not under our watch. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to accelerate the representation of women. Countries that have moved uh, and increased uh, representation of women have adopted special measures. These range from quotas to targets. What we are calling for this March, when we meet with all the governments around the world, it, during this International Month for Women, is acceleration of adoption of special measures in as many countries as possible. And we do need some countries to take the lead because there's nothing like peer pressure. <laughs> Even <laughs> uh, said, nothing like peer pressure. And you said representation, increased representation of women. How is the Biden administration doing now? Again, can't necessarily turn all the numbers around, but what does it mean to have that increased representation and setting that example that you think the Biden administration is doing now? Actually, we are quite excited about uh, the Biden administration because it's now one of the countries uh, that has increased significantly the representation of women. For instance, in your cabinet, you will have 49%, just one percentage uh, less to make it, uh, to join the elite group of 14 countries with a, a gender equal cabinets. But that's still quite high. And that will definitely be noticed by other countries again, uh, around the world. And because you are coming back into the United Nations with that agenda, that too, we will make sure that we highlight so that uh, we, we use it as a form of peer pressure. I love the peer pressure. And by the way, you have contributed to the representation personally. You actually made history as South Africa's first female deputy president. Can you talk about the importance of that to you personally and the importance of that to your country? Absolutely uh, important that when you are in that position, you make sure that you leave the door wide open. Hmm. And I was so glad when Vice President uh, Harris also highlighted the fact that she may be the first, but she will not be mm -hmm. the last. Yeah. So you actually need to continuously work with other women use your platform to showcase other women and make sure that the world, your country, is able to notice the diverse and the talent that is there amongst women in the country. And, and ma'am, I think the report says only about 20, 22 countries have women as uh, heads of state or in charge of government. How would some countries be better equipped to deal with the pandemic that we're in right now if women were in charge, do you think? Well, evidence is there. The handful of women who are heads of state have done a fantastic job of dealing with the pandemic. Can you imagine if we had more women? There is this assumption that men uh, are in positions of authority because of their competence. They are there because they are men in most cases. It's got nothing to do with the competence. It's just random men who are in positions. Then you have a handful of women who are in these positions and look at how well they have actually performed. You mentioned that timeline, that unacceptable timeline of 130 years. How quickly do you think we could actually get to a place of equality in terms of government leadership, female to male? Uh, we are pushing for the year 2030, uh, which is in line with the Sustainable Development Goals, to be the time frame that we are using for achieving substantive equality. We 
we think it's important that uh, Parliament lead in this because parliaments can become role models in countries and reflect what needs to happen in the country. We have seen in the countries like India, in this picture that you are showing now, where when women were elected in large numbers in local government, the kinds of laws and uh, bylaws that they were passing were much more family friendly. There was much more access to water, much more access to infrastructure, and of course, a lot of support for families. So women also bring in a decision making, concern and care for families, which is important for everybody. Thank you so much for your time, your effort, your passion, and also you are a history maker mm -hmm. in your own right. So it's an absolute pleasure to have you here with us. And we hope to see you down the road on GMA3 at some point. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Oh, what an honor. We were so yes. lucky to have her with us <laughs> to, to spread that word. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.